So what I love about PPS is for cord cutters that have canceled cable and you still want to watch broadcast TV, this works how people want broadcast TV to work. You go online, you can download the app, you can go to the website, and you just watch it for free. It's great. Um, you can go to pbs.org or you can download the PBS app. So first, let's go over how to watch it through the website. You'll just wanna to navigate to pbs.org. Once you're on the website, select your member station, and then click on Live TV on the upper right-hand corner of the screen. And then, boom, you can watch the entire live feed of your local PBS station through the website. So next, let's talk about watching PBS through the app. If you download the PBS app and you're on a Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, or Samsung TV device, you will need to activate the PBS app after downloading. To do that, navigate to pbs.org forward slash activate and enter the code that is displayed on your screen in the app. And once you've done that, you will need to sign in or create a PBS account, but this part is totally free. You can also sign in with either Google, Facebook, or Apple. You won't need to activate it, however, if you're using an iOS or Android mobile device like a tablet or a smartphone. And once you've done that, you can watch the live feed of your local PBS station through the app. Now, besides the live feed of your PBS station, you can also watch a selection of their shows on demand for free. To get extended access to the on-demand content, though, you will need PBS Passport. I'll get to that later on in the video. Now, when it comes to PBS Kids and the different children's shows like Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, and their various different educational programs. It works pretty much the same as the regular PBS channel, it's just that they have it in a separate hub. You'll wanna go online to pbskids.org or download the PBS Kids app. But now I'll get into PBS Passport. Now, of course, you can watch PBS for free if you wanna tune into the live channel, and a lot of their more recent programs you can watch for free as well. But if you want that extended back catalog to some of the things like Masterpiece, Downton Abbey, Nova documentaries, Frontline documentaries, all of that stuff that goes way back decades through the history of PBS, you can make a recurring donation to your local PBS station of five bucks or more and that will give you access to PBS Passport. And next, there are some premium channels that you can get either through Amazon or Apple that include a lot of the content from PBS. Now, there is overlap between this and the outlets you can choose to watch it for free, so just take note of that. And finally, of course, you can watch your PBS station with an antenna. I have mentioned multiple times that I plan to make a video going through everything you need to know about antennas. I will make it eventually, I promise. I know some people have asked about that, um, but that is an option as well. Now, if you are subscribing to a live TV streaming service, take note that some of these that include the local stations do not include PBS. I don't know why that is, it just is. The ones that do include PBS though are going to be YouTube TV or Direct TV Stream. So that should cover everything you need to know about all of the different outlets to watch PBS. My favorite is just going to the PBS app and watching it for free, but of course there are other options as well. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to this YouTube channel to stay up to date with all things streaming. I want to thank you so much for watching today. I hope you all have a good one. Bye-bye.